Welcome to the intro episode of the Burn It Nutrition Podcast. I'm your host, Joseph Navarro. On today's show, I will share the moment that sparked my transformation, where I went on to lose 60 pounds of pure fat in just seven months. We will also discuss the key pillars of fat loss and the important first steps that should be taken when starting a body transformation. I'm so pleased to have you with us today. Now, let's start the show. Burn it. You are not alone as you begin this new stage of life. Learn the strategic methods to reach your goals and flourish the light within. With our guidance, you will uncover the hidden truths that have been missing from your understanding. It's time to let it burn. What you get by achieving your goals is not as important as what you become by achieving your goals. Words by Zig Ziglar and truths we must always remind ourselves of. Take a moment to stop and imagine the day when you can wake up and be able to say to yourself, I actually reached my goal. To know that you stayed disciplined every week, focused on the habits that would get you to the pant size or body fat percentage you wanted to see. That day will be a great day to look in the mirror and say, hey there, sexy. But when that day comes, our physical body shouldn't be the only part of us that has transformed. For it is just as important that your inner self, your inner confidence, your inner joy, it should all grow as you reach towards your physical goals, raising all levels and becoming someone that will be an example of what the prevailing human can be. I went through a metamorphosis, reached a stage where the best version of me could thrive. I was able to transform myself and I was feeling too good to go back to my old ways. The new strategies that got me here were bringing out the best in me and I was not about to let that go. I began helping the people around me reach their goals, but still I felt I could do more. I knew that countless others were about to start their transformation who, like myself, had tried doing the same old routines with little results. They were looking for the methods that would work for their body type, so I founded Burn It Nutrition, as well as this podcast. Our mission is to help those that need guidance in their own journey for better health. We want to show you the methods to burn the fat in an effective and sustainable way. Each episode will have stories helping illustrate the message, allowing us to learn from different perspectives. Also, we will share the hidden truths about nutrition and fitness, plus some yummy recipes that will be aligned with your goals. We have been guiding our clients through some awesome transformations, and our desire is to teach you a way to live that will allow you to thrive for the rest of your life. It all began on the trails of the Santa Monica Mountains. Riding my mountain bike was a passion of mine. It had become a weekly occurrence starting at my house and ending at the beach. You are submerged by the fresh air and wildlife. It really is a feeling you should try to experience. It makes you feel primal, a feeling that nature is home. Something about building up a sweat and getting your heart rate going to then arrive at the beach really did it for me. The fresh scent of the ocean breeze hitting your face never got old. It was a sprint to take my helmet gear off and jump into the refreshing waves. On this day though, it went a little different. Heading down the mountain, headphones rocking and feeling great, when all of a sudden, I was slammed onto the ground. <coughs> Dazed and in pain, yet I managed to pick myself up. I noticed I was bleeding down my left arm and the backside of my head was throbbing. I unstrapped my helmet and saw that it was split. Glad I had it on, or else that would have been my head. I struggled to gather myself. For a moment, I lost my sense of direction, forgetting what trail I was on. It took a while to piece together how I fell. Turns out, a timber root snagged my tire, hurling me into the dirt. So you know the saying, the bigger they are, the harder they fall? It's true. I verified it. I was a big guy, weighing in at 280 pounds, so the impact was fierce. I picked up my bike and noticed it was bent, but still working, so I rode out. As I made my way back, I felt something odd. The fall triggered something. Something had changed. It was my perspective. 
I had a moment of clarity when I looked at my life and all aspects in it and they were all wrong. I came to realize that I lost control of my health and it was slowly killing me. My weight had become a serious problem. I was in terrible shape and my overall life was not where I thought it'd be. I didn't want to admit it, but I was on a road to diabetes and a life of declining health. It looked like it was just going to get worse with every year and there was no changing it. Or was there? Looking back on it now, maybe that's what I needed. That day was the catalyst that brought change into my life. I began my transformation and guess what? I didn't need anyone's permission to start. It was a challenge I gave myself and it was on me to make it happen. But I didn't know where to start. I knew the standard tactics, but they never seemed to work. The never-ending struggle of constant hunger and excessive running was not sustainable. I knew that I had a lot of weight to lose and I needed something I could stick to. I'd spent most of my life overweight and at 280 pounds and 40% body fat, I was now at my heaviest. On that day, on that mountain, I made a choice. A choice to find a way to transform myself that would work for my body type. And I've never been the same since. After my perspective shifted, I began the gauntlet of research that forever changed my life. I went through several long months of taking courses, listening to audiobooks and health podcasts, as well as getting my certification in exercise and nutrition. I did all the research to find what were the most effective methods to lose the weight, but most importantly, to get healthy. I didn't want to go through the same old cycles of losing a whole bunch of weight only to regain it months later. I wasn't just looking for a new diet, I was in search of a new lifestyle that would make my improvements sustainable in the long run. After my research, I was able to find the most effective methods that led me to lose 60 pounds of pure fat in seven months. I kept my lean muscle mass and burned away the fat that was trying to take over. I experimented with a few different diet plans, learning the pros and cons to each. We will dive into which of these different diets actually worked best in the next episode. So, I hit my goal and reached the day when I was able to look in the mirror and say you did it. I felt alive, energized, truly happy again. Stayed focused and took it one day at a time, making sure to put my effort into the healthy habits, knowing that if I did, the fat would burn away. I felt like I discovered a hidden scroll with all the secrets. Secrets that would allow me to not just live, but thrive. I didn't just reach my goal, I surpassed it. And most importantly, I have been able to keep all the weight off. This is crucial. Remember that a good diet has to be sustainable, or else the weight will just come right back once the willpower fades. I once heard a story of a man that was exploring the most remote parts of the world. On one of his adventures, he noticed a row of giant elephants. He took a moment and gazed towards them with a look of confusion. It occurred to him that these massive creatures were being restrained by only a small rope attached to their front foot. It's all that held these massive animals from running free. There wasn't any chains or cages, no restraints that would be strong enough to deal with their force. But still, they stayed bound in the situation they were in. He noticed a caretaker nearby and walked over to find why these tanks of an animals didn't make an attempt to get free. Well, the trainer said, when they are very young and much smaller, we use the same size rope to tie them, and at that age, it's enough to hold them. They are conditioned to believe they cannot break away. They believe the rope can still hold them, so they never try to break free. Like these elephants, how many of us are in a stage of life where the progress is being tied down? or we are not willing to try again due to previous failures. Just because you failed at fat loss once doesn't mean you can't still break free. Maybe it was the wrong methods that kept you there. Maybe your mental strength wasn't as strong as it is now. Let's now discuss the essential pillars of fat loss. These are the basics that must be addressed when starting this new stage of your life. For effective progress, you must establish these essential habits allowing long-term stability and endurance. Habits that must be met before any advanced strategies can be implemented. The first pillar of fat loss is hydration. Water is key to the fat loss process. You must allow your body to be lubricated from the inside and you do this by starting your day with an inner bath. Drink a glass of at least 16 ounces of fresh water every morning. See the cells in your body need the water in order to function properly or else they wither away and die. 
Keep in mind that there are billions of cells in your body, so it's good to aim for a gallon of water every day. Even more if you're in an area with hot temperatures or doing lots of physical activity. Water should be seen as an essential nutrient that is given in liquid form. It adds up to around 60% of your body composition and holds many important functions. Functions like helping your food digestion and absorption, as well as transportation of nutrients. Making sure that your water needs are met is key to fat loss, to life in general. The next key pillar for effective transformation is adequate sleep. Lack of sleep can impact all aspects of your life. Countless studies have made it clear that sleep plays a vital role in physical and emotional health. Each night you go to bed, shutting things down is when your body goes into repair and regenerate mode, it begins the rebuilding of muscles and allows for better conversions of short-term memories into long-term. When you awake from a good night's sleep, you feel ready to take on the day. Your clarity and moods are improved as well as your ability to control appetite. When someone doesn't get the sleep their body needs, they cause some of their hormones to get unbalanced, leading to cravings of fatty carbs and other poor choices. Another great reason to get quality sleep is that it helps reduce stress in the mind and cardiovascular system. You see, life is full of all types of dramas that take a toll on our hearts. And the hours we lay in slumber allow your body to repair and reduce inflammation accumulated throughout the day. So getting around 7-9 to nine hours of sleep is ideal for most adults. Your body will be good to you if you allow it to regenerate when it needs to. Some strategies to get better sleep is to reduce the amount of blue light before bed. These are the light rays from things like your TV and laptops and cell phones. The blue light affects your circadian rhythm by reducing your production of your sleep hormone, melatonin. Try to use red light bulbs before bedtime. They have a much less effect on your melatonin. You may also want to consider reducing your coffee consumption before bed. You see, caffeine stays in your system for hours. So drinking coffee right before bed just doesn't make sense. Try to drink your coffee before 2 p.m giving you time to clear out before bedtime. This should allow for a more relaxed sleep. Working on getting better sleep will make you a much more pleasant person to be around. We have all seen how grumpy kids are when they need a nap, while full-grown adults can be just as bad, especially if it becomes a chronic issue. Our next pillar, stress, is going to be a bit tougher to deal with. It's a key pillar that has to be managed in order to allow your body to function effectively. Here's a story to consider when you're having a stressful day that's just bringing you down. Let me tell you a story of a girl. A girl who had been struggling with all the ups and downs that life brings. She went to her father, fretting of all the various problems she was going through. It was beginning to overwhelm her and the tears seemed to be building in her eyes. She told her father, It felt like just as one problem was solved, another soon followed. He asked her to follow him into the kitchen, where he then began to fill three small pots with water and placed them on the hot stove. Once the water began to boil, he placed a potato in one of the pots, an egg in the second, and some coffee beans in the third. He turned to his distressed daughter and gently said to her, Life is tough. That's why we have to be tougher. Don't let the problems that come along bring you down. Life is too precious to be constantly stressing out and worried. He then turned and removed the potato, the egg, and poured the coffee into a cup. What do you see? Potatoes, eggs, and coffee, she muttered out. Look closer, he replied. Touch the potato. She gently tapped it. It's soft. He then asked her to break open the hard-boiled egg and finally to have a taste of the coffee. Mmm. The fresh aroma brought a much-needed smile to her face. Dad, what's your point? He explained that the potato, egg, and coffee beans had all faced the same type of adversity in the boiling water. However, they all had a different reaction to it. The potato went in strong and firm, but the adversity weakened it, making it soft. The egg went in frail and delicate, but the adversity caused it to harden. But the coffee beans, they were special. After they went through their adversity, they changed the water they were in and created something new. Or in other words, they used the adversity as a stepping stone to reach their purpose. The father asked her, so which one are you? An adversity comes knocking on your door. How do you respond? Are you a potato, an egg, or a coffee bean? It may be hard to believe, but the stress that life brings can be beneficial. 
On a recent TED Talk, Kelly McGonigal, a health psychologist, shared the new research showing that people who viewed their stress response as helpful would change the physical reaction of their body. You see, when you have a stress response, your heart rate elevates, and when your heart rate elevates, your blood cells constrict. But people who viewed their stress as beneficial didn't get this negative effects. Their blood cells stayed relaxed and didn't constrict, the same response that's seen in moments of joy and courage. Your belief on stress will have an effect on your body's response to it. Now, this doesn't mean you invite more stress into your life, but when it does come, you can remember that it can be a benefit to your body if your mind believes it to. Moments where you feel like your back's up against the wall and the pressure starts building can still hold a purpose. See them as a chance to make you stronger and to let it bring on change in your situation. Just like your muscles get stronger when you add stress to them through resistance training, so too can your mental and emotional strengths be improved. Stress can be a tool that brings out the brilliantly dazzling version of you. Like a diamond, one of Earth's most precious stones formed deep beneath the Earth's crust. See, its carbon material is subjected to pressure and immensely high temperatures, and over time, it crystallizes to form a raw diamond. So from now on, remind yourself of this. Whenever you're going through hard times and you feel the stress response elevate your heart rate, consider that it may just be elevating your heart to allow you to deal with the situation that you're in. And so, believe you can handle it. Also, you can see it from this perspective. If there is a problem in your life and you have the capability to do something about it, then by all means do. But if that problem is out of your control, then there's no sense in worrying about it. Leave it in God's hands. I'm sure he can handle it. Our next pillar to fat loss is exercise. But this one, unlike the others, should be added once you get the other basics down first. Joseph B. Worthling once said, great sculptures and artists spend countless hours perfecting their talents. They don't pick up a chisel or a brush and a palette expecting immediate perfection. They understand that they will make many errors as they learn, but they start with the basics, the key fundamentals first. To create awe-inspiring structures, you must first set a firm foundation. As you strengthen your body's foundation, it can be built up to its greatest potential, using exercise as a tool to help you get there. But please note, for effective progress, nutrition is most important. The saying is true, no amount of exercise can beat a bad diet. But with that being said, exercise is still a key pillar for a rapid transformation. Some of the benefits that are gained when exercise is implemented are improvements on your brain health. Studies have shown that older people who had exercise throughout their life had less cognitive impairment than those who didn't, reducing the chances of developing Alzheimer's and dementia. Also, exercise has emotional benefits from the release of the happy hormone serotonin, helping you fight depression and anxiety. The rise in serotonin is what helped coin the term a runner's high. Another great benefit is improved skin. See, when you exercise, blood flow is increased providing a rush of oxygen and nutrients to your blood cells throughout your body, allowing for waste products to get carried out. Enhanced blood circulation will also aid in some forms of sexual dysfunction, allowing you to have nights full of passion with your significant other. And this will go along well with your boost in energy and improved confidence and self-esteem. Our next pillar can be illustrated in this story. A story of a son who took his elderly father to an elegant dinner. Due to old age, his father was very frail and having trouble eating. The food was getting all over his face and shirt and causing a mess of things. The young son noticed other diners looking on with disgust over the way his father ate, but he was not embarrassed. After the elderly father had finished his meal, the son took him by the arm and walked him to the washroom. He gently began to clean his shirt and managed to remove most of the stains, combed his thinning hair and adjusted his glasses to fit just right. As they walked out, they felt the stares of all the other diners, some of them struggling with how someone would allow themselves to be embarrassed publicly like that. The son paid the bill and began to walk his father out. When a diner that had been watching called out saying, Don't you think you left something behind? The son turned and replied, No, sir, I haven't. Yes, you have. He left a lesson for every son and a hope for every father. The restaurant went silent. This story shows the importance of social support, our next pillar. 
Caring for those that once cared for you is a sign of great character. Everyone will need support at one point in their lives, especially in a journey when body recomposition is the goal. By sharing the news that you're starting a body transformation will greatly increase your ability to stick to it. You can express your goals with your social network of friends and family or any other groups of people you encounter on a daily basis. Being held accountable is crucial when attempting changes in habits. Now, this doesn't mean you force your lifestyle changes on others, but more along the lines of expressing that certain choices will have to be turned down. This will help down the road in avoiding tests of willpower when the donuts come around. People will know you are bettering yourself so not to sabotage your efforts. The next pillar for success in a body transformation is consistency. When you look at people who are successful, you will find that they aren't people who are motivated, but have consistency in their motivation. Wisdom by Arsene Wenger. You won't get to your goals by only staying on track on the days that you're motivated. Every day counts on your journey, especially the bad days. Being a weekend warrior won't get it done. These are the people who have good habits during the week only to get derailed on the weekends. Their progress will not advance, but stay the same at best. They're really just spinning their wheels. Stay committed towards your goals, especially at the start of your transformation. That way you build up good habits and begin to see faster progress. The goal is to build consistency in your choices, making healthy food a normal part of your life. It's been said that it takes two to three months to cement a new habit, so give it some time and stay on track. Imagine the person you will become and have them in your thoughts to motivate you, especially if you're about to make a poor choice. In the end, it will be worth it. Your health will thank you for it. Recipe ideas for today. We have reached the segment of the show where we talk about some yummy options. So what's on the menu today? We have lettuce wrap tacos, which can be absolutely delicious with the right ingredients. What you do is get a head of iceberg lettuce as your wraps, chop some chicken or steak or any protein you prefer and add it to the wrap. Then chop some cilantro and onions and sprinkle them on top. Then you will add a scoop of some low carb salsa. Also, Make some guacamole by mashing three avocados with some salt and pepper for seasoning. Finally, squeeze some fresh lime juice and voila, you'll have a finger licking good lettuce wrap that will satisfy you and your family. You can go to the website for full details on how to make this dish and many others that will get you closer to your goals. I hope you found some good takeaways from this intro episode of Burn It Nutrition Podcast. We will be bringing the most effective methods for fat loss to your ears. Now believe me, I know how it feels to despise your body. I've been there. Last year I was 280 pounds with 40% body fat. And I knew it wouldn't be easy, but I wanted my life back. I lost 60 pounds of fat in just 7 months and it's still coming off. But trust me, there were bad days. After all, we are still human. But there were more good days than the bad ones. So my question to you is, how bad do you really want it? Why are you choosing to go through this transformation? Is it for your family? Or is it to get in great shape to find a partner to start a family? Find whatever is igniting your passion and burn it deep inside you. Whatever may be your inner motivation to change, hold on to it for there will be days when you're just not feeling it. Those are the days that matter the most. Days when you're getting attacked from all angles by the bad influences. Those are the moments when your strong inner self must shine. But don't get overwhelmed just yet. The methods I can show you will make the road much smoother. Honestly, I wouldn't have been able to do it without them. I'm not special. I wasn't born with great genes that make weight loss easy. My family's big, with genes primed for obesity. But still, I was able to transform myself. So trust me when I tell you that there is an answer. Let me guide you into the best version of you that's just waiting to come out and live. If you like this podcast, then subscribe and even share it. I hope you join us on the next show. It won't be the same without you. Now brace yourself, because it's time to let it burn.
Please note that the Burnet Nutrition Podcast is for educational purposes only and is not meant to substitute for the advice of a doctor. Please consult your GP before using any of the techniques or products discussed on this show.